The core question I want you to ask yourself, and then we'll get into a specific tactic later, but the question I want you to ask yourself right now is, what are you committed to becoming in the next three to five years? Because even if you're not an expert right now, are you committed to becoming an expert on something in the next three to five years? Now, this could be very interestingly aligned with your life situation. Let's say you have a child who's 13 years old and they are absolutely infatuated with volume you're their volleyball coach, you kind of as a family eat, sleep, breathe volleyball, and you know for the next four or five years, there's a really good chance you're gonna be involved in the sport of volleyball as a coach, as a coach parent, et cetera, et cetera. Bingo, you are on your way to becoming one of the potentially foremost best coaches in the world or in your area at least on the game of volleyball. And since your kids are going through it and you're doing it, why not really get into the game and understand the mechanics of the game and why not become the best that you can at that? Maybe you're really into racing drones. Maybe you're really into horseback riding. Maybe you're really into yoga. I don't know what that is about you, but oftentimes when you don't already have 10 years of expertise to pull from, it's more about what are you becoming? Then, as I mentioned earlier, there's a tactic you can implement, right? So how do you, as let's use this volleyball coach example that totally popped into my mind randomly, how does this kind of individual whose kids interested in volleyball, they wanna help, they wanna participate and maybe make a business around this, how do you actually learn more about the game of volleyball? And obviously researching is a big part of it, right? The library system in the United States of America is absolutely amazing. The access to books completely free in most communities. Let's go ahead and mention the Google, which gives us access to all of the information that is digitally available in the world, the biggest index in the world. So the access to the information is not the problem. That's not the hurdle. It's the commitment of purpose. And then it's like, well, what do you do when you find the information? Well, there's this theory and something I've realized recently that writing is not necessarily as much about communicating an idea as it is about learning. And and this is a really, really big distinction that hit me last year, and it came from this book here, and it's called Thinking on Paper. And the premise of this book is that writing and the act of writing is actually your way of learning, right? Let me repeat that. When you write things out, you go read the books, you research, you research the top new articles on a topic, and you take the time to write out an outline, to fill out that outline and write a comprehensive essay on everything that you've learned. The actual act of writing is learning, not you communicating. Therefore, if you move forward and you commit to writing three new great blog posts each and every week on that topic relevant to what you're becoming and you just write, 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 this by default means that you will be learning more and more about this topic with each, with each and every post that you publish, which means over the course of three years, writing three posts per week, that's 150 weeks times three posts a week, that's 400 and 50 posts you will have written at that point in time from the amount of content that you've consumed and read and researched in order to write that volume of content, you will have read more than just about anyone else on the topic. You will have published more on just about anyone on that topic. You will be in the top 1% of the most knowledgeable people in the world on that subject and you have a gigantic credibility indicator on your side that is a massive blog that is a resource. You mix this with the two simple skills of keyword research and the basics of on-page SEO, which I teach for free here on my channel. I'll have the links to those videos down in the description of this video if you need those. That's it. That really, truly is the recipe for success. I really recommend this book, Thinking on Paper. It really opened me up. It's uh, V.A. Howard, PhD, and J.H. Barton. That's who wrote that book. Highly recommend that one for you. But ultimately, understanding or thinking critically about this right here. I'm going to sum it up one time real quick. Number one, what are you committed to becoming? Right? What are you committed to? Are you committed to becoming one of the best drone racers in the world? Are you committed to becoming someone who spends all day every day with their horses because you just love your horses that much? Whatever it is that you're committed to becoming, that's your starting point. That's your entrance point. That's the affinity with this niche, with this world, with this subject matter, 
ultimately with an audience of people similar to you who are looking to get better at that thing. Then you commit to the process of writing. Now, if you're like Miles, but you said, I need to follow what's in my DNA and writing is not in my DNA, great. Maybe you just write out the outlines and maybe you write out and fill out these great outlines, you do the research, you write out the outlines and you perform it in a video. Well, when you do that and you pass that video transcription along with your written out outline that you created on the topic over to your virtual assistant, they are going to create a way better blog post for you on that subject than if you just turn on the camera and shoot from the hip. Maybe you're into podcasting and you'd rather just talk it out. Great. Again, you start with the research side of things. You write out the outline, which is essentially where your show is going to go. When you have somebody make your show notes, you pass them the outline. Your show notes get better. Your WordPress blog go grows with great written content that you're not producing. Ultimately, again, you are creating helpful content for others through the process of learning about this yourself. This is a really, really big key. And the final tip for you, if you really want to become extremely knowledgeable on a specific subject beyond what everyone else is doing, first of all, you got to do everything I just talked about, but then go to Google alerts. It's google.com forward slash alerts and enter your top keyword phrases, right? So if it's volleyball, volleyball strategy, volleyball tactics, volleyball coaching, volleyball news, you enter that into Google alerts and you have Google alerts send you an email every time a new article is published about your topic. Then you read said article. This is your finger on the pulse of your marketplace in the here and now. You still need to understand all of that old school knowledge that's been passed down from coach after coach after coach in the world of volleyball, the game that's probably been played for, I don't know, 50 years, 100, I have no clue, right? So you need to understand the history, the backstory, what worked, but you also need to have your finger on the pulse of exactly where the industry Industry, where the market, where the sport, where whatever it is you're in is going today. Google Alerts is an extremely powerful tool for this. You can have it email you once a day all of the new articles on your subject matter. And as you read through those, it's going to give you more ideas about content ideas. You're going to mix what you're learning about the here and now with what you learned from the books on the way in the past. Then you're going to synthesize this and you're going to learn it all at a very deep level because you're going to write out your outlines. You're going to write out your blog posts. You're going to perform your podcasts or your videos. This is how you become an authoritative expert on the topic. It takes time, but it is an absolutely proven path. You can embark from here and go any direction that you want. So choose one that's going to be fun. Choose one that actually uplifts you in your life because that makes this whole process fun and easy. We're getting to that point in life where they say you'll never work a day in your life if you do something you love. I agree with that. If you love volleyball, go that route. If you love drones, go that route. Do what is in your heart and it'll be fun and it'll feel easier than if you're just forced yourself to go into a niche because you think there's money in the niche. You'll never succeed long term in that sort of a niche. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope you found this to be helpful. If you have any questions, the comments for that, I do pop in as often as I can. My time is quite limited. So if I don't get back to you, I apologize. Thumbs up, engage, like, share, do what you do. I appreciate you and I look forward to connecting with you on the next video. Till then, be well.